Good morning, good morning, everybody. I hope you are doing very well and that you are ready to our second meeting, well, for both the networks. Uh, mm -hmm. As you can see on screen, um, we have some instructions for a fruitful and, uh, and smooth uh, running of this meeting. So you all have the right to unmute yourself, but we would like to ask you to please keep your microphone on mute until you actually have to talk, so we avoid background noise. If you want to talk, I would also like to ask you to please raise your hand. There is a control um, next to your, the icon, you know, where, where you see your face in the screen, where you can uh, raise your hand and we will give you the word. For anything, you can um, use the chat. So we will answer questions also through the chat. And ultimately, uh, I would like to ask you to please rename yourself so that uh, we know who is uh, making what statement or, or who wants to take the floor. Also, in this case, there is a control next to the icon showing your, your face <laughs> uh, that uh, is named rename. So please use it to rename yourself as following. So the name of your country or organization followed by your name. Uh, Filippo, I'm now taking control over uh, the screen. Before going through uh, the agenda, I would like to explain you once more how these uh, uh, meetings will, um, will be organized, or actually has been organized <clears throat> for... Um, mm -hmm, just one second. So, you know, today we are actually, who is attending the meeting are participants from two networks. We have the Eurozolam, so Europe and the Eurasian uh, participants, so networks, uh, uh, participants from this network, and uh, participants from Africa, the English-speaking countries in Africa. So these two networks will be together today and tomorrow, and uh, we will do the training part all together. Then on the 2nd of October, so Friday, we will have only participants from Europe and Eurasia. So that day is dedicated only to the Eurozolan meeting because it's about decision making. So I would like to ask uh, Afrila participants to please not attend that meeting. Well, I did not send you the link to join it too, but just in case you end up in it, please uh, uh, just, uh, just drop the call, <laughs> don't join it. Why? Because uh, Afri Africa participants from English-speaking countries will have their own decision-making session next week, so on the 8th of uh, uh, October, together with uh, French-speaking countries with Africa. Okay, I hope this is uh, clear. Uh, I reported in here also the time schedule. So today we have uh, the meeting organized in two sessions. A morning session that we run from now, so 11 until uh, 1 p.m. Then we will have a lunch break, and then we will start again at 2 p.m., so from 2 to 4 p.m. Uh, with the afternoon session. For Eurozolan, this will be all the time. For AfriLab, this time is applied only today and tomorrow. Next week, we will follow the time schedule of uh, the French AfriLab meeting. So from 9.30 to 1.30 p.m., pay attention, GMT, it's a different time zone. I sent you all a calendar invitation. Maybe just the ones that have special settings in the calendar did not receive it. But please pay attention, there is a change in the time zone. Okay, now I would like to go with you quickly through uh, the agenda. So today we have the opening by the chair of Eurozolan, so Mr. Georgi Gambashitz. Then the chair of AfriLab will take the floor, and this is Mr. Joseph Uponi. Then we will have a, a very nice moment in which I will ask you all to please turn on your camera, and uh, we take a group pictures, <laughs> virtual group pictures. So please uh, remember to turn on your camera and make me a big smile. Therefore, I give the floor to Nopmane Suvana, the chair of Glossolan, that uh, will present uh, about uh, um, Glossolan updates. And then we will start with the real training. 
We have a first training session on external quality control. Uh, and here we have two countries to present that volunteer to present what they did. So the actions they implemented after participating in our PT. These countries are Malawi and Nigeria. And uh, the session will be moderated by Mr. Christian Harman from IRD France and Mr. Michael Watts from the British Geological Survey, so the UK, that uh, will also give us general guidelines and will moderate the open discussion on how and why it's important to take actions after participating in a PT. Thereafter, we will uh, still talk about uh, uh, interlaboratory comparison. So we will look at downscaling um, glossal PTs, meaning the organization of national proficiency tests. Okay, also in this case, we have two countries that uh, will tell us a bit about their experience. These are Ethiopia and Belgium. And the moderator in this case will be Christian Harman again, and I will also help. Then we have the lunch break. And in the afternoon, we will talk about uh, the establishment of national soil laboratory networks. My colleague Filippo will tell you a bit our plan, so the Glossolan plans in terms of establishing these national networks. And thereafter, we will look at some case studies. So the ones, some countries volunteer to tell us a bit how they establish their network or are establishing the network or the problems they're facing to establish the, their network. So we will hear from uh, Mozambique, Hungary, Zimbabwe, Ukraine, Nigeria, and ultimately Belgium. We will close uh, today with a presentation from Portugal, a, lab a private laboratory in Portugal, that uh, will tell us a bit about their experience in one of the poorest countries in Europe. Tomorrow, we will have a training session on equipment purchasing, use, and maintenance. I think this is of great interest to you all. So we will start by talking a bit about good practices on purchasing and operating laboratory equipment. The vice chair of AFRILAB will tell us about this, uh, referring to a document that is available on the Glossolan webpage. It's a training manual, actually, that we published this year. On, on this topic indeed. And it's available in um, five out of six UN languages. So please have a look at it. Glossal on webpage under the equipment session, section. Uh, then we will talk a bit about the procurement of uh, laboratory equipment. Uh, I will be moderating, uh, I will be presenting um, about the experience we had in Glossolan on procurement, and the, the vice chair of Rosolan, so Ms. Spella Velikonia, will moderate the discussion session. Uh, then we have the lunch break, and we close today with a really a, a big training session from a manufacturer, so an equipment producer from Switzerland, the booty, the Buki. Uh, Labotechnik that will tell us about equipment, installation, use, and maintenance. Again, good practices. And these close uh, the training sessions, uh, so for Eurozolan and AFRILAB. So I would like to start now by giving the floor to Mr. Giorgi Gambazide, Eurozolan Chair, for his opening remark. Giorgi, the floor is yours. We, we cannot hear you. Please unmute yourself. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes. So it's my pleasure to welcome all of you for our uh, annual meeting. So it's, of course, not so good that we do not have capacity to meet each other personally and we are organizing this event uh, remotely. But uh, I'm very optimistic, so I hope that these all uh, struggles uh, in, related to COVID-19 will be ended soon and we will go back to normal life and we can communicate easily and meet each other personally and do more than we could expect, we, we, think we can do now. So it's my pleasure uh, to uh, say hello to our AFRILAB colleagues as well, uh, not only European and Eurasian um, countries. Uh, so it's our 
first joint uh, activity. So it's very good that we can exchange more as we are doing normally at uh, glossolan meetings. So uh, the, yeah, again, uh, many things which we planned maybe we could not accomplish uh, within aerosolan activities and many we have many you know, plans again uh, which we postpone for the next year. So, but again, I hope that we can manage to overcome these delays in some activities and we can uh, do and be more active for the next year when we uh, have no limitations in activities and uh, moving around. So thanks a lot to everyone who managed to um, now join us and uh, are ready. Uh, not also to our uh, nice uh, colleagues who agree for the providing us uh, for trainings and uh, presentations. So thanks a lot to everyone and our GSP colleagues, of course, who are organizing lots of meetings, not only uh, aerosolan uh, or regional meetings, but many other meetings like it was for spectroscopy and uh, other meetings, which is also planned within next uh, weeks. So thanks a lot to GSP team uh, for everything because it's a lot of work and we see this how, how hard you are working and we are really getting so many <laughs> invitations and uh, letters. So it's really hard sometimes to be honest, to not to be confused and to manage everything uh, accordingly. So if I'm sometimes delaying some answers, I'm sorry for this because sometimes it really, it really happened uh, with us as well because we are not also in normal conditions right now. So thanks a lot again. So I will not take a lot of uh, your time and wish you a great uh, meeting, uh, despite this is uh, remotely, but I hope we can manage somehow and get used to this. Uh, as I say, we still have to uh, use this opportunity for next meetings as well. So thanks a lot to everyone and wish you a nice and fruitful meeting. Many, many thanks, Georgi, and you need apologies for spamming you all. <laughs> I send a lot of emails. This is a very busy period of the year for Glossolan, so apologies, because I will send you more <laughs> in the coming weeks. Uh, now, Joseph, I would like to give you the floor. Please unmute yourself for your opening remarks. Thank you very much, Lucrezia. And... Uh... Hello, 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 can you hear me? We, we can hear you, yes. Okay, it's my great... Now we can't hear you anymore. Joseph? Hello? Joseph? Uh, I think he's not in the list of participants anymore. Yeah. Uh, I think he lost the connection. So meanwhile, I would like to ask you all to please turn on your camera. I will be taking, uh, well, let me stop sharing my screen. And I will be taking group pictures. So big smile, please. Uh, give me just a second how I do this. gallery here it is okay are you ready please remember to keep your microphone muted otherwise uh, the icons on the screen will move and uh, i will miss someone okay ready first screen three two one smile oh. Okay, first picture capture. Let me go to the next screen. Three, two, one. Wait, three, two, one. Smile. Okay. Okay, next screen, ready, three, two, one, smile. Okay. 
Okay. And then I don't see cameras on anymore. Okay. Now I would like to give the floor. We continue with our agenda. We are a few minutes late. Actually, one minute late. <laughs> I would like to give the floor to the chair of Glossolan, Ms. Nopmane Suwanang, for the updates on, uh, on Glossolan, so on the global network. Uh, Nock, the floor is yours. I understand that you want to share your screen, so please. Are you... We can see your screen yet, huh? Okay. Okay, so you see my screen? No. <laughs> no? No. Bye. Bye. You want me to play okay, your Okay, so you, you, you put your screen, please. To okay. Save the time. Look at here. Mm -hmm. Let me open the presentation. Oh, now I can see your screen. Ah, okay, good. Okay. okay. So, so, it's okay? Yes, perfect. Please go okay. ahead. Okay. So, good afternoon from Thailand. Uh, I'm very happy to be here today to meet our colleague from Eurosoland and also the first time that I will meet a colleague, many colleagues from uh, AfriLab. Today, I take the opportunity to uh, provide you the report update of the Eurosoland uh, activity. Uh, let me remind you about the Eurosoland establishment in November in 2017. Uh, in order to strengthen the performance of the lab through the use of the standardized methods and the protocols, harmonized soil analysis methods so that the soil information would be comparable and interpretable across lab countries and regions. And we also have a hope to provide a certification for the technical competence in lab analysis. Now, uh, up to now, we have almost 500 lab or allow the world that already, already registered in our coastal land. Uh, that the, the table show you the number of the participants from each region. You can see that we have a lot of uh, participants from AfriLab and also the Euroso land. And this is the, the figure that show you the increasing of the interest of the participant to register in our network from AfriLab from the starting in in 2018, January until, until uh, 21st sep September. And this is for the Eurosoland, it's the same. We have an increasing participant. It, it means that we have a lot of interest left that would like to join us. So the main area of our work, we have divided to uh, the main area of our work to be more easy to work on the topic. So in, in the first main topic that we would, uh, are working on is the quality land and the quality control. We are providing now a basic guideline on how to produce a soil sample for the proficiency testing. And our training on the internal and the external quality control will be done during the annual meeting like today. Uh, uh, to the annual meeting like this time, we also have a training session about the purchasing of the equipment and also our training material and the PT report will be available in our website. Actually, we also execution of the regional and global uh, PT. In 2018, we have organized the regional PT in Asia and also in Latin America. And in 2019, we, it is the first year that we organize a global PT with a uh, participate, allow 100 lab that participate in our PT or region and look at 12 analytical parameters. From the result, we can see that it is valid to make a global network because the analysis result do not depend on the region. We have very similar on the mean of the result. And we also can calculate uncertainty. So, comparable, so comparison at the global level are now possible. 
low performance of the lab are exist in terms of the training while the good performance lab will be giving the opportunity to compete for the equipment. So I will give you the detail of this uh, later. In the same time, Gosoland is also encouraging the lab to organize their national PT by establish the first global custom control procedure. As you may know that now we have more about 500 labs. It was very difficult for Gosoland. We work with 500 members. So we downscale our activity to the national by provide establishing to serve them for the first global custom control procedure. The resolution on the international exchange of the soil sample for the research purpose under the Global Soil Lab Network will be presented at the 27th Committee on Agriculture in 2020. So please ask your member that uh, participate in that uh, meeting support our endorsement. So this is the page of our soil import legislation. As the interlab comparison is a key tool to access and enhance the standard of the analysis and access to the standardization of the soil analytical method across the country, leading to have more reliable and interoperable soil data. But in order to promote the facilitate of the organization of the international interlab comparison and to access all those countries, with the analytical capacity insufficient to cover their national demand to chip the soil sample to be analyzed. So we decide to share knowledge and explain on national custom control by organizing them in an online global custom control procedure database. As you can see here, we call simple. So in this, you can select your country and come to have a look on your information. We would like you to cross check for the information in the database and also coordinate the shipment of the sample with all this recipe lab. Ask the recipe lab about additional document that you might have to prepare. So that will help us to ease the process of the uh, soil exchange sample. This is the, uh, uh, the example of the uh, Botswana uh, the document need by the custom country specific demand additional information because each country will not have the same uh, information that they need. So uh, please uh, provide to come to have a look and check your data on your country. If it's wrong, you can inform to our secretary uh, FAO uh, Lucas here. This is the European Union website and the Austria website. And the interest lab may have the opportunity to provide the sample to Gosoland's PT. Becoming a global uh, Gosoland PT sample provider not only benefit to the Gosoland activity, but it also give the opportunity for you as a sample provider to have the consensus value assigned to your the, to the sample and then allow you to consider this sample as a reference material that may be used in your quality control procedures. And on the area of the standard operation procedure, we are going hand in hand with the execution of the internal and external quality control exercise. We are working now to produce globally harmonized SOP for the known methods. And priority is given to the method for the analysis of the soil chemical parameter at this moment. But we will start this year, I, I hope, to start on the soil physics and also the biological parameter, as well as on soil contaminants very soon. The method to harmonize are designed at the annual meeting of the coastland, keeping into consideration the regional priority and the request. In 2019, we have harmonized the SOP5, SOP that already harmonized on soil sample pretreatment, total, total carbon by domus dry combustion, organic carbon by work rate and back, and calcium carbonate equivalent by the volumetric calcimeter method and by dietic method. And all of these SOP you can reach by uh, our website uh, with, without the cost is free. How does we make the harmonized process work? We identify one leader from the regional harmonized SOP in the work plan. 
regional SOP leader work together to prepare the SOP form. And then GSP will distribute this form to the network and to compile and anonymize lab information and share this information to the regional SOP leader for their regional harmonization. When possible, regional harmonized SOP will be present and discussed at our Lesolands meeting. Unfortunately, I think that this year we cannot do something like this. So this year, maybe we will make a like a harmonized by the email. Regional SOP reader to do the global harmonization and present the draft SOP at the annual coastal land meeting. So what SOP that coastal land will work on 2020? All the coastal land SOP will be available in our website for free. So this is the, all the SOP that we will work this year, 14 SOP that we will work this year. You can see that uh, you, we have a, a group of the readers from AFILAB and also the Euroso land that already involved to be the leader of our SOP. And I would like to thank uh, for all the name that mentioned here that support to our activity. And I hope that this year we, have, we will have more and more of the participants that have the skill that would like to take in charge of this role also in the other SOP. So in the area of the equipment, as we may, may know that in the lab, equipment is very important. But remember that the equipment alone does not make the difference in getting the reliable data. We believe that the training first is very important. So before investing the new lab equipment, the lab manager should make sure that the lab staff is properly and regularly trained and that good lab practice, including equipment maintenance and calibration are implemented. However, the lab cannot work without the equipment. So we decide to provide the lab that have a good PT in this in last year with the new equipment the PT of the lab is access to the Gosland uh, PT report that you can, I think uh, the, the member that participate in our PT already get the draft report of our activity. So based on the result of the Gosland uh, PT 2019, we are now providing the equipment to 21 lab in 21 countries. The detail, maybe you can see the detail later in the uh, uh, Gosland website. So uh, we are also working on the promotion of the good practice. We have uh, produced a publication on the good practice on purchasing and operating lab equipment, advice what to do and what not to do before, during and after the purchasing of the lab equipment or receiving it as a donation. Good practice on the management of the consumable and hazardous substance are also included on this. And uh, because uh, some lab have the problem with the equipment that they have received, so we also added with a barter donation system to give the opportunity to the lab that receive the donation that have the equipment that, are, that they are not in the condition to operate and or will maintain because of the several factors like the in-situ availability of the service providers of the equipment maintenance provision of the consumer for specific equipment brands, the same can happen to the lab purchasing new equipment themselves. This can result in the misuse, damage, and also disuse of the equipment. So we are now available to support lab willing to barter their well-functioning equipment for free. Why the solar lab also are asked to replace their still functioning equipment on a regular basis. Instead of being this post, this equipment can be donated to the lab in need. So more information available at our website and Interless Lab can send an email to our secretary. We also development the guideline on the procurement. We are working to develop the guideline on this procurement of the lab equipment. This would help lab to better formulate their request to vendor participating to the bid, get the right equipment, get trends or its use and receive after sales service, including remote support and maintenance service. 
Moreover, we are also working on the innovative technology like the soil spectroscopy. On uh, April 2020, we launched off the Gosselin program on the soil spectroscopy. And we have the first meeting, panel meeting on the 23 to 25 September. We have a very large amount of the participants that participate in our meeting, 350 from 63 countries. And the main conclusion from our, act, uh, our meeting is that uh, the concept note that we have prepared is was revised. And 2020 and 2021 work plan for Gosoland on this spectroscopy have been defined. Special attention was given to the establishment of the Global Spectra Caribbean Library and the writing of the guideline, protocols, and manual on the spectroscopy. The modality by which Gosoland will interact with the other initiatives and how the project can contribute to the Gosoland was also defined. The modality by which Gosoland will interact with the countries and lab institutions and organizations working on the soil spectroscopy was also defined. The governance of the initiative also was defined in this meeting. Gosoland also received a request to look into the fertilizer quality assessment, and it is now working on the establishment of the international network on the fertilizer analysis. To be launched to online meeting in 2020, the main objective of the meeting is to define the international role and the specific objective of the INFA, develop the INFA work plan, identify the international organization like the Fertilizer Institute that INFA should connect to for this uh, cooperation and also the opportunity to make the collaboration. In order to prepare to the meeting, the lab and the institute responsible for the assessment of the fertilizer quality in that country are being identified. Regional and the international organization, association, and the institutes working on the fertilizer quality assessment and which agenda compatible with that of the INFA are being identif identified. As per the principle of the Gosolan, we try to cooperate and limit the duplication of effort as much as possible. All stakeholders working in the field of the fertilizer quality assessment are invited to complete the questionnaire. And this input will be used to open the discussion at the lunch meeting of the INFA. So I will provide you some input that we have collected from for our survey questionnaire here with the report. We have made a survey on the quality of the fertilizer access in, in that country. And 78% uh, uh, say yes for all type of the fertilizer and amendments. When we are asking about the standard that they use to access, most of them, 68% said that they use the national dialogue standard. And 100% said that they would like to have the global standard on fertilizer quality assessment. So the expectation for the INFA is that we would like to develop the global and when appropriate the regional harmonized method on fertilizer quality assessment and also organize a global PT on the fertilizer quality. A database on the custom control procedure will be due in the same as the soil sample. Possibility to establish the regional center for the training and doing the assessment of the fertilizer quality and actually Capacity building, training, and equipment is also very important. In order for the country to use the INFA method, we need to work on INFA and also the policy in parallel. So I think this is more or less the last slide. Now we are downscaling the activity from the Global Soil Lab Network, Land, to the National Lab Network. And in this meeting, you will hear some discussion on how how they are already established on, on their national network. Do they have the uh, problem or it's very smooth to organize this? So I hope that we will have uh, some country as an example for the other that uh, cannot be established. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nock. Um, is there any question? 
you if you have any question please type them in the chat and uh, we will be happy to to answer to them uh i would like now to give the word to so I, in this sense i would like to move to the training session on external quality control and give the floor to um, uh, malawi so wesley uh, feldman from fest agricultural laboratory to tell us about uh, uh, their experience in taking action after participating in a, in the glossolam proficiency test uh, Wesley, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. Can Hi. you hear me? Yes. Hi there. You can share your screen. Shall I... Let me do that. Lucas, it yeah. says host disabled participant sh um, screen share. I can share for you, or you can tell me when uh, I have to move the slide. Maybe. Okay. We can share for me then. Okay. Do you see the screen? Perfect. Yeah. yeah, thank you. That's good. Tell me when uh, you want me to, to change the slide. But you have okay, to play we'll the presentation. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good morning all. I'm Wesley Feldman and I'm from FES AgriLab, a newly developed lab in Malawi. Um, can you change quickly? So we are a startup agricultural laboratory and we've been operating for one year. We opened in September of 2019 and we used the Glossolin uh, proficiency test to validate our results almost as we opened the lab and started our analyses. So the lab's equipped with a number of different uh, pieces of equipment as shown on the slide. And we basically, our aim is to analyze everything agricultural. So from soil, leaf, water and fertilizer. We, these are the sample types we're looking to analyze, as well as getting into pesticide um, analyses with the GC and LCMS. Uh, can you change, please? So what we did here was we used the proficiency test um, as we opened the lab. So we submitted four, um, four results, pH, electrical conductivity, organic carbon, and nitrogen. And so as you can see, we only got pH correct. So this was um, a sort of call to tell that we needed to implement quite a strong quality control system from the results of the proficiency testing. Okay, can you next slide, please? So the actions we took were to do just that. We implemented quite a strong, um, almost checklist approach where we used um, the, the measures on the slide one to four, where we started with reference materials. We first purchased um, a, a wide scope of reference materials, and from that we developed our own internal controls. From there, we monitor our batches of samples um, with these internal controls, putting the, the controls in the beginning, middle, and end of the batches. So then we can see how our results are um, varying, if, if at all, over an extended run of an instrument. We then do blind samples and replicates, these are sort of the same thing. Our replicate rule is to um, duplicate every 10th sample, whereas blind samples are taken at a more random, um, random assortment. The third one, and possibly one of the most important, was to increase our scope of proficiency testing. So of course we got our results back from Glossolin, but we also identified two other soil-based uh, proficiency tests, being Agrilasa from South Africa and Weppel, from the University of Winningen. Um, and these allowed us to, to test the, the scope of our analyses a little bit more because they're quarterly proficiency tests. So we can, we can check on a three month basis. And they, Agrilasa, for example, test soil, leaf, water, and fertilizer. So these give us um, a wider range of our parameters and sample types so we can externally validate these. The final thing we did is to, we noticed with our instrumentation, we needed to ensure that we were getting the right results with a good le level of confidence each time. So what we do here is run our internal controls, basically it be between five to 10 times at the beginning of every month. And then we can update our internal controls. Plus we can then ensure that our instruments are giving quite a consistent result. And then one, one thing we've just started to implement now is to use 
templates. So these are basically um, Excel spreadsheets with inbuilt macros. And these can now identify things that are grossly out of range or negative results. From there, we can then, we can then um, go to identifying what our corrective actions should be. So then we, once we've identified that a batch of soil samples, for example, is out of range, we can write a non-conformance, discuss the corrective actions as a team from analyst, lab manager, and chemist, and then we can, uh, then we can say what needs to be done. Is it the instruments? Is it bad extraction? There are a couple of different things which, um, which it can be, and then we get to the bottom of it from using that procedure. And can you move um, slide, please? And then, then just to conclude, basically we're using these proficiency testings to put a, a more rigorous quality control system in place. We want to have a checklist where we need to tick off that a range of different parameters are in range, good, and then we can be confident that the quality is good and that the clients can be happy at the end of the day. And so can we. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Wesley. Uh, let me give the floor actually to the moderators of uh, these uh, sessions. So Mr. Christian Harmant and uh, Mr. Michael Watts. Christian and Michael, the floor is yours for the moderation. Yes, thank you. Uh, in fact, you were so afraid to be late again that uh, you, you skipped the introduction that we wanted to do to remind, give some reminder to the people who are participating to that meeting, but who did not perhaps participate to the proficiency tests we, we launched. So I will share my screen Up here. Okay. Mm, do you see the presentation? Yes, please. Um, yeah. So the item two was how to take action after participating in a, in a PT, in a proficiency test. We before the presentation, we wanted to remind to everybody that the laboratory objective is to produce good quality data. So what can be good called good quality data? It's data that are accurate and precise. These two concepts are very important. So the accuracy is how close you are from the goal. You see, for example, on this figure, the target on, on the two top targets, you are very far away from the middle of the, of the goal. So your results are not accurate. At the bottom, you are closer to the middle of the target. So your results have increased better accuracy. But at the same time, precision needs to be taken into account. This is how close you are for your different replicates. If you replicate several times the same analysis of the same hit on the target, where are you? So you see on the left, there is low precision. On the right, there is high precision. And these two concepts, these two measures, because you can measure your precision and accuracy, gives an idea of your performance. And so how can we measure the lab performance, the proficiency testing, or interlaboratory comparison is one way to measure this. So what Glossolan did, there are three samples, A, B, C, that have been prepared, grinded, homogeneity has been tested and sent to 100 labs around the world. They were 14 different parameters to measure, including pH, carbon, nitrogen, and so on. And after making the analysis, the labs had to send back the analytical result to the GSP headquarter. I think Nock mentioned about the fact that the result are 100% uh, anonymous. The statistical analysis was made. So I was one of the person who made the statistical analysis, but I do not know the code and where the results are coming from. Only the, the leaders of the GSP knows this. So statistical analysis is made blind. And after this, the Glossolan sent back to each lab that sent the result, a document showing the lab performance, the Z score that was just mentioned in, in the previous uh, presentation. And the Z score is for each parameter. 
So you see here the kind of document that the lab has received. You have the sole name on the right, ABC, and on, on the x-axis, you see the code of the different parameters. OC, WB is, for example, organic carbon, white clay black. And so how can you interpret this? So if you are between the two green line, minus two and plus two, you are, have satisfactory or acceptable result. This is what has just been said also in the, in the previous presentation. And between the green and red light, your, question, your results are still questionable. This does not mean they are wrong, they are questionable. This can be explained during other trainings about statistical analysis. And if you are above or below the red line, you have wrong results for sure, for statistical reasons. And this has also been explained. So the objective of this session is, after receiving that document, what kind of action can you take? And I think we had already a very good presentation on the way the lab manager reacted after receiving the results. So this was one first presentation and we will have now the case of Nigeria for Mr. Egbe Williams that will present here also how in his lab they reacted. So I let now Filippo manage or oh, Mr. Egbe. Yes, I wish Hello, can you hear me? Can you see a presentation? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. So, Egbe, please uh, let me know when you want me to change the slide. Huh? Igbe? William, are you there? I think we have a connection problem with yeah, the... Yeah, among the participants, <laughs> we lost connection. With Nigeria. <clears throat> we move forward now. So, Cree, you want to, Christian and Michael, do you want to move to? I can hear you now. Can you hear me, Lucrisa? Yes, please. The floor is yours. Hear me? Hello, Lucrisa, can you hear me? Yes, please start your presentation. Okay. Now. The case of Nigeria by B. Williams. A lab is the National Fertilizer and Water Laboratory, Kaduna, Nigeria. 2019 proficiency test. Kagana. Williams. Please can please. Hello. Sorry. Williams, we, we cannot hear you. It's, the, it's breaking a lot. Very bad here, over here. Network very bad. Ah, okay. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Okay. Can Let's try one more time. Hello? Can you hear me now? Yes, let, let's try one more time. If it keeps on breaking, we move to the next item. I'm very sorry, but we really can't wait long. 
Okay, so the, the result of the testing by the uh, the area of emphasis, let's look at the general result in slide six. Are you taking us to slide six? Slide six. Slide six. Yes, beautiful. Now, from the statistical analysis, the first thing we tried to do was to try to analyze the statistical analysis, the Z score for my laboratory. And uh, from the parameters I participated in, result of pH uh, fell within the, the acceptable range, organic carbon only. Minus three results. Was to Williams, and we discovered that it was the way. Now, if you look at every other result, I think. I'm very sorry, it's breaking too much. We, we can't follow what you are presenting. Uh, Filippo, is there, what is in the next slides? Is there a summary of the actions taken? Yes, let's see the summary of the actions taken. Now, the so, first thing I did was to understand the PT evaluation process, which is the Z-score and my general performance. And the unusual thing I discovered was in that of nitrogen and a result of calcium, magnesium, and the potassium. Now, the, uh, which analysis I perform usually below or above the mean score and analysis of nitrogen. Plus two, a plus two. So I come scale, which we had to just for the various analysis. And ensure they were strictly ahead to us. A precision check. Yeah. Now I trees as the extract. Um, Williams, I'm sorry, we still have the same problem, but I think we gave enough time to participants to read through the slides. What is in the next slide, Filippo? Is still actions taken? Yeah. Okay, let's give them a few more. That's number five of this. Or maybe we can read it loud for Williams. Okay. I'm very sorry, okay. Williams, because we, we really, we, we can't hear anything. Okay, so, can you read it for me? Yes, I ensure that all data reported subsequently for any analysis are cross-checked, making sure the right units and actual values are reported and that the data reported correspond to the method used. Then I perform recovery tests using a CRM for every analysis and compare results with target recovery for the analyte concentration. Then I make sure every, every sample to be analyzed for any parameter is done in replicate, promoting reproducibility, which also help us to carry out precision tests. Then perform EC check for distilled and deionized water regularly. We entered into laboratory exchange program with the Institute of Agricultural Research uh, in Nigeria for information sharing and interlaboratory comparison. We took a training course on ISO 
uh, IEC uh, 17.024, and then again ISO 17.020 and ISO 17. 25 to strengthen our capacity and in preparation for accreditation as a reference laboratory uh, that began in August this year. And it is uh, going, it is ongoing per initiative of the Nigeria Institute of Soil Science. Uh, foremost uh, soil science regu regulatory body in Nigeria, said led with the responsibility of ensuring that soil and fertilizer laboratory in Nigeria meet up with international standard. William, did you, do you want to add something? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm so sorry because the, the audio, the connection is so bad. Okay, so I believe this is the last slide for the case of um, Nigeria. So Christian and, um, and Michael, the floor is back to you. Okay, Christian, shall we uh, gauge opinions of everyone for actions? Yeah, perhaps ask if other people would like to say, okay. but perhaps I would like to say something. I really thank the two people who presented the results because some of the results were bad and they were not ashamed or afraid mm -hmm. to present it. This is the daily life of a lab. You cannot make the things perfect and they presented the problems to everybody. And I think the way they tried to solve the problem was very interesting. So the first thing is, thank you very much for presenting what <coughs> you, the problems you had and what you did. So Michael, I let you now run the yeah, discussion. I, I would agree. Um, it's it's um, very, very commendable to be honest and open. Um, at BGS, our quality systems were, were established in the late 1990s um, in working with the nuclear industry. So we have a mature system that everybody is familiar with, but we still have problems. So it is constant work. It, you don't just solve it with a training course or telling somebody to run QCs. You have to constantly check on procedures and of course, Everybody knows that, but it's another thing to actually do it and to keep the interest and the motivation to do it is, is the biggest challenge of all. Um, it's very easy to set up guidelines. What we're not going to do here is actually present guidelines. There isn't enough time to go through that. We would appreciate um, any commentary on from other laboratories uh, and their experience on the PT results. So has it changed behavior? Was it a positive experience? Did it worry you? Was it constructive? Um, so perhaps if anyone could offer some uh, feedback on how they found the experience and what actions they have taken. And then we can co collect opinions together to gradually put together some guidelines from the whole group. Um, the experience of putting the sample preparation procedure together was quite painful and I realized um, at the end it required much more um, conversation to come up with a, um, a harmonized approach. So please do express your opinions. So you can put them in the chat box or you can unmute yourself. And of course we have the WhatsApp groups. So d does anyone want to offer their experience? Or shall I pick on someone? Yes, I'd like to offer an experience. Okay. That's Joseph. Joseph. Yeah. Uh, for us, it was a very useful experience because um, although we've been participating in PT programs with a uh, Wagner game, uh, this global one was uh, interesting for us. Incidentally, we had a problem with uh, uh, nitrogen also and uh, we went back to check what the matter was with the nitrogen results. Obviously, on the day we did the analysis, there was some uh, ammonia in the air. Somebody opened a bottle of uh, ammonia not too far away. So we had higher values than expected. By the time we repeated the analysis, it came in less than, uh, the Z score was less than two. So we were assured that uh, our analysis was okay. I think it's a good idea 
uh, to have this proficiency testing exercises. And we hope that we can start some uh, proficiency testing locally also to make it easier for distributing samples uh, in country. But it was a good exercise. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that example, Joseph. Um, so you, you had a problem, you investigated it, and uh, you came up with a solution. Um, yeah, was, we did. Was, was that whole process documented and then shared with your staff? Oh, yeah, it was documented. We have uh, a documentation process for doing that, usually. Uh, the investigations and things like that are documented, yes. Um, because because uh, that will help you to um, avoid the same problem happening again and again. And unfortunately, that can be very frustrating and expensive. Yeah. We have it documented and uh, also uh, usually when we, when we have experience uh, such uh, things after the troubleshooting, we have to mandatorily <laughs> retrain the staff who is uh, doing the analysis, even though they know to do it, but just to make assurance that we show. Okay. And do your individual staff have training records so that you can document your action? Yeah, because it's required, of course, to document the retraining of the staff. So it has to be retrained and then certified again for the analysis before it can proceed. Yeah, okay. So you can assess their competency to do that task. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Does anyone else have... Uh, was that everything, Joseph? Did you want to say any more? Take that as a no. Did anyone else no, want to? I'm okay. Okay. Does anyone else want to offer their experience? Come on, I'll choose someone on the screen. So I have Agnes right next to my screen. Why don't we pick on Agnes? From Hungary. Oh, Agnes is just... Agnes, please, unmute yourself. Yes. Ah, sorry. <laughs> oh, you have uh, I uh, can't hear a question, sorry. Could, could you um, give some uh, feedback to the rest of the group on your experience, much as we heard from uh, FES and from uh, Nigeria? What, what uh, was your experience? Did it change any behavior? Was it a positive experience? Was it worrying? Was it constructive? Did After the PT? Yes. Uh, we, we have uh, some uh, problems with uh, calculation and uh, we uh, check out our system and we uh, recognize we um, don't use a multiply for uh, uh, potassium and uh, it uh, was useful for us uh, to uh, take these uh, experiences after the PT, I think. Okay, that's a, that's a nice example and a very common and easy, easy problem is a simple <laughs> mistake in a formula. Yeah. The, um, the little mistake, but it's a very uh, big mistake in a uh, result. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a great example. I think there is a, con a contribution from uh, um, Came from Cameroon, if I'm right. Uh, Hello. Rose Thank Are you, you Agnes. So Hello. Cameroon. Yes. Cameroon. Hello. Yes. Please go ahead. Yes, good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, depending on, on the, the, the part of the world. Yeah, this is Rose from Cameroon, and I just want to share some experiences we've had in the lab as well when it comes to quality control, when it comes to Z-scores. Unfortunately, I did not participate in that first round of PT um, testing with, with Glossolan because I was not present at the meeting, but I worked closely with Joseph, my colleague in Nigeria, and we actually, uh, we do a proficiency testing with WebPAL. And at some, at some point we had some problems with our nitrogen values. We had Z scores that were, that weren't, that weren't, um, that were out of the limits. It was above two and no, below two actually. Oh no, above, yeah, above, 
like minus three actually. And so what we did, we started looking back and we, we found out that the equipment, our digester had had a problem with the, with the probe. So we got a new probe locally, which was not really the right probe for our equipment, implying that our samples weren't digesting completely. And so we're having values that were a little bit, that fell short from the mark. And so it took us working backwards to pinpoint that it was because of the machine. The, 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 the temperatures weren't, you know, exactly those temperatures, you know, um, that the machine would give due, due to the prop that was inappropriate. So in the end, we had to um, readjust the temperature settings for the machine and this, at the same time reordering a new prop for the equipment. So in the end, we got it sorted out, but it took a lot of working backwards, you know, going through the chain, analysis chain to get it fixed. Same thing with the, P, the pH meter, we got uh, pH values at some point falling short as well. You know, we had to work backwards, you know, is it a, a technician problem? Is it, and, and the, in the end it was the electrode because the filling solution had dropped a little bit below the mark. And so when we topped it up and then recalibrated, we began. So, you know, like I'm a Christian said earlier in the lab, you know, you would, you cannot tell, you know, it would come from one direction one day it's fine, another day, you know, because of a little problem with the equipment or even there's the solutions you prepared, something would go wrong. And so for us to actually, you know, be on top of things, we, we actually have, we also have certified reference material, which we have values for, you know, so we insert that in each batch of our samples and that's like our first line of control. So in a nutshell, that's what we do on a daily basis in our laboratory to make sure that we're, we are on top of things. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That's another very nice example. Um, and of course, do documenting all of these um, examples in your own labs yeah. is very important yeah. to learn the lessons because people forget. Yeah, um, that's true. And it and it's also about communicating this information to your to your groups. Does anybody yeah. else have an example? I'm feel shy. Okay, so we've got the University of Zimbabwe, I think. Hello. Yeah, thank you, Michael. It's it um, because from the University of Zimbabwe. Uh, you know, being in a teaching lab is not easy. We've got too many people coming into the lab. We're having problems with the, our results. We usually get very high results. So we tried, started to investigate what was the problem, why we're getting too high results. So as a result, we, we ended up finding out that we were using one of our detergents to do the cleaning, uh, which has got sodium carbonate. So we could get high, carbonate results from our soils, we could get high results or sodium. And so we tried to investigate why we were getting too high results. So we managed to find that one of the detergents that we were using was actually having some sodium and it was also having some carbonate. So our soils, our results, we could get high results of uh, carbonates you could get high results of uh, sodium. So as a result, we've actually changed uh, our detergents that we are using uh, to wash. We are using dilute nitric acid in order to eliminate uh, that problem of having high results from our lab. And also we are training our students. All along, we're not using, you know, the quality controls. So we are trying to implement use of standards in our labs. Those are still a challenge. We, we are yet to learn how to make uh, internal standards and also probably get uh, external standards that we can actually incorporate in our day-to-day -day soil analysis. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think one of your colleagues I worked with on a soil 
exchange with several labs across Africa and uh, you had a problem with iron results yeah, from, your sure. atomic, uh, from your um, atomic absorption spectrometer. And as we thought about that, um, he realized that his iron standard was 20 years old. So, of course, you know, there is always an explanation and you can solve the problem. So there, these are good examples. Does any, anybody else have an example where they've investigated a problem in the PT scheme? Maybe someone from Europe or, or Eurasia, because we heard a lot from Africa. Don't be shy. <laughs> or was it a positive experience? Everything went well. There's nothing in the chat. Anything else that will, anyone else that would like to share their experience? How about in Georgia? <laughs> they look very comfortable. <laughs> Georgie, would you like to share your experience? <laughs> Poor Georgie. <laughs> yeah, in general, any test who can say that it's uh, additional experience uh, to do any external samples, and especially then it is like proficiency test, and uh, we are glad that in most cases our result was okay. Uh, and of course, we, we, uh, it doesn't mean that everything is ideal and we, there's uh, always some room to improve uh, some um, uh, results, yeah? Because in some cases we have some differences in different uh, samples or some samples where like well uh, suited to other results, uh, some was a little bit out. So, so we, we, in some cases, maybe we found just small, um, it could be associated with some small um, errors uh, within the process of the analysis, but it was not uh, as like uh, crucial that we got something very special. But of course, again, it, it's any, even normally when you do any additional sample, you are getting, which is different from the normal, routine uh, samples is always uh, again experience because you never know what what you can expect from that uh, sample and you, uh, therefore uh, more uh, care should be taken normally um, to avoid any uh, random errors because normally i think mainly it's it's the case because other systematic errors if you have it uh, then it's uh, maybe uh, it usually reflected on all samples, but uh, some random errors so it can, could be reduced. Uh, to be more careful, to take care of all, all steps, uh, starting from the uh, digestion of the sample or extraction, uh, filtration, and so on, and finally, of course, uh, to measure it on the instrument carefully. So again, okay. thanks to all of you thanks. for your experience. And sharing so, with us. Can I ask if you are if you're happy with your results? Do you share the the um, the results of the PT scheme with staff in the laboratories? Is that communicated? Yes, yes, sure. Even now, our my staff is here, so we are like yeah. jointly okay. attending this meeting, and of course, we are discussing all these uh, issues yeah. uh, internally, and. Uh, of course, each step, because otherwise you cannot improve your performance if you will not share and discuss all details. Yeah. Because as I mentioned, very sometimes very, very small uh, details, even temperature in the room, for example, which can be slightly different in different uh, rooms even, yeah, uh, can uh, make uh, small changes, then you are, then you want to be more precise and accurate. Okay. Yeah, it's important to reinforce the positives as well so that people know they are, uh, are working well. Yes, you are happy, then your results are somewhere in line with the other laboratory results. Yeah, of course. Yeah. This is, again, uh, confidence uh, in yourself that uh, what you are doing is not very different from that the others or more experienced laboratories already uh, did. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you.
Okay. Does anybody else want to give an example or, or their feedback on the experience of the PT scheme? And the question you have asked, Michael, I think is very relevant one. What is, because we have, I think, mainly lab managers, but we can ask them also what is the feeling of the staff when they see yeah. the result, if the results are good or bad, what are the reactions of the staff? I think this, I wanted to ask the question just when you ask it too. Yeah, it's important. Is, are the staff defensive or uh, yeah. um, I, I, is there a culture, an environment where people, uh, um, it's not a, not a position of blame, but uh, a constructive approach to improve performance? So we have some good examples. Um, I mean, simple things like calculations can be, can have mistakes, uh, contamination of the laboratories in various ways. Those are good examples. Um, investigating through to an equipment problem, having checked that staff are doing um, procedures in the correct way. So those, those are general um, sort of examples. When we do feel free to send us either via the WhatsApp groups or email some, some examples that you would want to see in guidelines um, but what we will do is put together some guidelines and please do provide feedback um, so that this is a practical document that everyone can use because we can give our experience but it might be from our um, own perspective which is no good on a worldwide on a global sort of basis. Lesego has her hands raised so maybe she wants to Talk. Okay. Les Ego, please unmute yourself. Lucrecia, we can yeah. hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, I wanted to make a contribution on the what the benefits from the test results. Um, our results were not very bad. They were good, in fact. We had a challenge with uh, our one only one test. And the test, I think, having had a challenge with it, helped a lot because uh, in a lab, we have a maintenance plan. And usually when you request for funds, it's not easy to get money. But the tests that we get, the test results that we got from uh, the proficiency testing helped us, us a lot um, in um, justifying to management that it is critical for us to follow the maintenance plan for the equipment because each of them can only carry a certain load uh, of, of, of samples before it can require uh, uh, to be serviced. And um, I think um, it helped in also in the sense that we managed to secure funds to service that machine. And the other thing that we realized caused the problem to uh, challenging results was um, the overload. Sometimes our technicians, they just carry too much too many samples at a go, and one is targeting at finishing the job. And we, we tried getting temporary employees to try and enlighten the workload on the technician so that they may give more focus to what they are doing. And uh, we also uh, managed to, to, to get something from, from Glossland to replace that equipment that we have. That was because uh, in the, in the uh, assessment that we were given to, uh, to complete, I really tried to be as open as I can. Instead of trying to say we can do a good job, I really stated the, the state as it is. Um, and I, I, I think uh, that's all that I can really say. And I also wa want to support Tembi, uh, the gentleman from Zimbabwe, that the kind of uh, washing detergents that we use, sometimes we have to be very careful because some of them, they are, phosph they are not phosphateful, they, are, they, are, they, they also impose contamination to test results. 
Um, I, I think that's all that I would like to contribute. Thank you very much, uh, Michael. Okay. Uh, one thing that hasn't been mentioned is a frequent mistake is the uh, incorrect use of units. Uh, that's a classic problem. Um, yeah. Often the reporting, uh, you may have a different reporting format to the PT team. So therefore you have to change your units. Um, often data is reported without units. Um, and you'll see some big commercial labs doing that. So uh, yeah. it, it, it can happen. Okay. Um, many thanks for suggestions and please do. Oh, um, the last contribution from Belgium. Uh, from Christoph. Christoph, yes. Please unmute yourself. Yeah, uh, I just want to add to the discussion that uh, indeed for us as well, the proficiency testing and the results are, are very useful. And just another thing I want to remark is, is the traceability, which is, has been for us very important. Uh, and with that, I mean, you participate in a proficiency testing and after several months, you get feedback on the results. And then you sit together with your staff to discuss. And then it's always very good to have all the procedures, all the steps, even the equipment that was used uh, to trace back how you came to the result. Uh, because we often see that, uh, well, two things. First of all, for example, it can be there was a change in use of other reagents or also, for example, other uh, milling equipment. Uh, and then it's good to know which all the different steps were used or equipment or reagents. Sometimes you can find that, for example, there was a contamination or so coming from a certain type of uh, thing that you used. So therefore, I really would like to say that if you have to find what was the problem, it often helps to find back how you came to that result. Uh, and then secondly, on the question like how, to, to, how do people react? Well, it's always like doing an exam. Uh, so you and all people react sometimes different on the unit but i think most important is that you have to be an open mind uh, and give yourself the example to the staff and trying to figure it out together with them uh, and sometimes the well in some cases it's very obvious like different units of course this can happen but this always there are a lot of other where even after one year of search we we, we did not find it so just randomly, or also that you find it, but it was really out of what you were first uh, predicting. So you really have to be an open mind uh, to find solutions and of course do it together with the staff and keeping them involved because that's the most important. They did it and they know best where things could have been gone wrong. So these are just the two things I wanted to add. Brilliant. Thank you. That's a brilliant example. And uh, it's largely about creating the culture, isn't it, within your laboratory? So there's that open discussion um, and not necessarily fixing the blame. Um, for a, it's, a, it's a good long term uh, solution. So thank you for that example. Um, Christian, yeah. I think we're running, we're running out of time. So yeah. I think Lucrezia is biting her nails. Just so, um, one last comment is that uh, I think what we try to explain in, in other trainings and that the people must remember errors are unavoidable. You will always make errors. It's impossible to make a perfect job. This is why you need quality control. Quality control is here to detect and after this solve a problem. But I think it's very important to explain to the people it's impossible, totally impossible to have a lab without errors, but you can detect them. And I, think, take that. I think Christoph's point about being able to investigate the situation, traceability yeah. is ultimately everything in the lab is being able to trace back what, what has been undertaken. Okay, I think we're at the end of the session. Yeah. Unless okay. Christian, is that okay? Yeah, okay for me. And thank you, Lucrecia, for the five minute excess time. You're muted, Lucrezia. Lucrezia, you're muted. Lucrezia, you're muted. <laughs> Sorry. So I was thanking you all. <laughs> really, thank um, all those that, uh, that that told us their experience. And thanks, of course, the moderator. It was very interesting. 
Uh, I would like now to move to the next session that is still about uh, PT, so about downscaling PT. We will learn from Ethiopia and Belgium. The moderator in this case is again Christian and I will uh, support. I believe there is no pre-presentation -pre from your side, Christian, for this, right? Okay, so I would like to give the floor to Muzefa Redi Abegaz from uh, the Ethiopian Institute of Agricultural Research in Ethiopia for your presentation. Muzefa, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, my presentation is just, uh, we have started a national uh, PT provision in the scheme of soil analysis. Uh, and the next slide. These are the outlines, uh, introduction, design of proficiency testing scheme, phase of test method, operation of uh, proficiency testing scheme, data analysis and evaluation of PT results. We have launched to one pilot PT provision for about eight participant laboratories. And finally, we have reported and we have conducted an evaluation workshop. And uh, uh, these are the outlines and the next slide. Uh, this is uh, an introduction for it in Ethiopian case. We have started a uh, agricultural research for about 50 years, for the last 50 years. And those uh, technologies are, those research technologies were released based on uh, field and laboratory experiments. And the soil laboratories are, play a fundamental role uh, in, in producing uh, agricultural technologies in analysis of soil, plants, fertilizer, and so on. Uh, and the next slide. Uh, currently, there are about 68 soil laboratories exist in Ethiopia. Uh, you can see the map. Uh, the all laboratories uh, dispersed in the northern, in the northern, western, and eastern parts of the country. And however, the data generated from Ethiopian soil laboratories are not reliable enough, and uh, need to improve their analytical service quality. And the reliable results will be generated based on fulfilling the ISO 17 of 25 standard and also after getting an accreditation certificate. Consequently, since the last five years, few, very few soil laboratories fulfill this standard and able to get uh, accreditation certificate. Mm -hmm. uh, among the few accredited soil laboratories, uh, our laboratory, Holet Agricultural Research Center Soil Laboratory, has been accredited since 2000. 14, and one of the major reasons behind main soil laboratories were not accredited is behind because of difficulty in proficiency testing participation. Uh, in our Ethiopian National Accreditation Office, in compliance with uh, ILAC rules, they have definitely they have the policy for participation in PT activities, but participating in PT is difficult due to reasons of getting uh, foreign funds and also so on. And uh, professional testing is, uh, is a significant component in the laboratory accreditation process as it allows laboratories to monitor the quality of their analytical results uh, as stipulated in ISO 17025. There are a number of benefits. These are benefits, you know, all uh, the benefits. Furthermore, regular participation in a PT program provides an external quality assurance. Uh, Accordingly, those accredited soil laboratories have been searching in soil PT provider from outside of the country, especially in our country. No local PT providers exist due to the absence of local soil PT provider. It is the fact that participating for foreign PT provider demands a hard currency that makes it difficult for the developing country, particularly Ethiopia that lacks hard currency and also the poorest country in the world. In general, fees from PTs from industrialized countries and transportation costs are often high and Ethiopian soil laboratories could not afford it. So with these justifications, uh, there should be a local PT provider. 
and her heart cell laboratory has been selected to be a PT provider through Ethiopian Laboratory Association with a PTB. There is a project, PTB project, uh, and that based on the, with the help of PT Pro, PTB project and Ethiopian Laboratory Association, the heart cell laboratory has been selected with a competitive base. Accordingly, a pilot PT provision was conducted for HL laboratories of AR during the first quarter of 2019. Uh, this is the design. I think uh, it's no need to tell you about the design, but just to tell you about some pointers. The frequency of participation is like a WEPAL. WEPAL uh, frequency of participation is four times a year and we have adopted that frequency of participation from the WEPA. And uh, currently, we, we do not uh, uh, pay, we do not need uh, any kind of fee for P PT participation. So no, no payment is expected from participating participant laboratories. However, probably after two years of getting uh, and getting in a participant, some payment uh, procedure could be devised. In each round, participating laboratories will receive one to two, two samples present, representing one to two cell types of ethiopia, and each sample uh, with uh, 300 to 500 grams. Then results of each test items will be requested during result submission to the PT provider. Uh, uh, all eight cell laboratories of AR will be uh, necessarily uh, participate in each round. This is mandatory. Uh, in addition, other interested cell laboratories will be encouraged to participate. Samples will be first sam sampled from agricultural fields, uh, representing a homogeneous cell type. And the sample depths will be mostly from the root depths, zero to 20 centimeter. Care will be taken during sampling. Then samples will be uh, sieved with 0 0.5 uh, mesh size, millimeter mesh size. And then the, the next step is homogeneity and stability studies. Uh, cell particles are difficult to mix, it's known, and need to be repeatedly subsampled. And therefore, after grinding, uh, dried samples and sieved with 0 0.5 millimeter sieve size. The bulk sample will be divided into subsamples by using rotary sample divider. Each sample will be subjected to homogeneity and stability test before dispatching to each participating laboratories. Then homogeneity will be uh, studied uh, and uh, one parameter from the soil parameter is selected, that's uh, the, the parameter is organic carbon analysis, and the stability test will also be performed. Uh, and in general, appropriate statistical uh, design will be followed for the homogeneity and stability studies. These are the choice of test methods. The test methods commonly uh, uh, used by Ethiopian cell laboratories, uh, for example, moisture tester, pH, in two methods, EC, exchangeable acidity, aluminum, nitrogen, phosphorus with three methods, and there is a unit uh, and laboratories expected to report with these decimal digits. And the rest uh, parameters are here, total phosphorus, sulfur, sodium potassium, calcium magnesium, organic carbon with well clay and black weight digestion method, uh, organic matter, loss of ignition method, CEC, micronutrients, and also heavy metals. And all eight cell laboratories of air usually use the above mentioned methods. And also if other laboratories can use uh, uh, different methods. They, they can report with uh, other method specific column. And during the reporting the test result, each test parameter needs to be reported with specific unit of measurement and number of significant figures. 
this is this all are will be included in the instruction and uh, when we see the operation of proficiency testing scheme these are the packaging labeling uh, handling and storage and also distribution packaging zipper plastic bag and waterproof cardboard will be used labeling appropriate labeling will be used with a code and therefore each laboratory will receive sample with unique code samples will be dispatched using a core or service and appropriate safety transport requirements and environmental conditions for the transport of pit items will be determined and communicated to the core or service Uh, all participant laboratories will be instructed on how to store samples and uh, after analyzing the test results need to be reported before the deadline. These are the deadlines. In general, procedures for dispatch and receipt of PT samples will be established. When the PT samples suspected in homogeneity, in instability, contaminated or deteriorated safe disposal mechanisms will be followed. And uh, in the and data analysis and evaluation of results, the results of CLPT will be collected either email or through fax uh, or Ethiopian postal service. After collecting the results, the data set will be evaluated by defining a range with which the result is assessed as satisfactory. Consensus value for, from participant laboratories will be uh, used as, as, as an assigned value, but it's difficult to, to use uh, those consensus values as a, an assigned value due to small participant laboratories. Uh, and in general, ISO 13528, 2005 version, statistical methods will be used for analyzing the results. During analysis of the results, Values differing too much from mean are marked as outliers and Microsoft Excel software will be used, but uh, definitely we have, we have got some Excel type of software from Dr. Michael Koch from Stuttgart University. And we are using that uh, self-programmed software and all data uh, will, will have a, a backup to eliminate potential loss of electronic data, detailed work instruction will be prepared during the statistical uh, analysis. And the participants' per performance will be evaluated by the obviously uh, Z score. The following criteria will be used absolute value of Z square less than or equal to two, satisfactory, uh, and between two and three, questionable performance, and between uh, less than three, greater than three, unsatisfactory performance. The evaluation will, will constitute variation between participants, variation between methods or procedures, possible source of error, improvement suggestions, recommendations, and general comments. The performance of the labs will be reported uh, to uh, to them through different mechanisms with maintaining confidentiality. The report will enable uh, the participating laboratories to compare the performance of their methods with, the, with that of other methods used. Reports will be sent to each participating laboratories. Uh, sorry. To each participating lab with, within three weeks after the delay, the final report will be authorized by the PT coordinator. And this is a communication. Usually we use the English language as a communication and we, us we usually, we will use uh, the email for the communication purposes. And in the confidentiality, each participating laboratories will have a unique lab code throughout communication. The lab code is only used in order to keep confidentiality. Therefore, all information provided the participants treated as confidential unless the participant has waived this confidentiality. When the result is, the result is issued to an interested third party, 
the participant will be notified when you're waiting. And uh, the first pilot PT for about eight cell laboratories. First, we have prepared the PT samples. Uh, the sample is sampled from Niti Sols from Hark Station, Holot Agriculture Research Center. And the samples uh, were air dried and crushed with mortar and pestle. And finally, sieved with 0 0.5 millimeter mesh size. And unfortunately, we didn't get, uh, uh, at this time, we didn't get a rotary sample divider from our donor, from PTB. But uh, we, 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 we divide the samples manually into eight parts, so repetitive based, uh, with a stepwise of a small portion of the sample from the sample. And finally, ready for homogeneity test. And we, we, we test the homogeneity by using the organic carbon analysis. And this is a, and this is a homogeneity test. This is a homogeneity test. Uh, we have we have tested the samples for for about eight times, and these are the results. Uh, duplicate uh, analysis and uh, tested by using the homogeneity test according to ISO thirteen five twenty eight, and we get this uh, homogeneity test self-programmed Excel software from Dr. Michael Koch from Stuttgart University. And after testing the, using this, this procedure, uh, finally the homogeneity test is okay. And after getting this result, we have dispatched those samples to each participating laboratories. And after getting uh, the results from eight participant laboratories, this has, these are some parameters reported from eight participant laboratories. And uh, for example, pH, organic carbon, Bre2 phosphorus, total nitrogen. And these are the methods uh, reported from uh, each participant laboratories. And uh, to, to see some, some results of uh, statistical analysis, for example, organic carbon, uh, we, can, we can see from the next slide. When we see the organic carbon results of eight participant soil laboratories, by the way, this is, this is analyzed by using a self-programmed software that we get from Michael Koch from Stuttgart University. And these are the results reported uh, from, from uh, each participant laboratories. This is the mean, the method is one, which is uh, well claimed black method. This is the Z-score. And from the z-square, the assessment is SSS means satisfactory, Q means questionable, and uh, there is no unsatisfactory performance uh, evaluated from, reported from uh, eight participant laboratories. So with this, we have evaluated, uh, we have conducted a workshop uh, after gathering all eight participant laboratories uh, through the help of PTB project. This is a detailed uh, analysis, organic carbon analysis. Uh, unfortunately, we, we didn't use the um, consensus value um, because the uh, participant laboratories are few. And uh, here we can see, you can see PT provider, Hark Lab. And this is the first round, 2020, not uh, 2019. We have planned 2019 but we have conducted in 2020. Uh, and this is the detail of analysis. And uh, pictorial uh, representation of the results of uh, the score, the laboratory C is good performance. It's below 0 0.5, between 0 and 0 0.5. And when we see the laboratory E, it's questionable in between minus two and minus three, and the rest laboratories performed well in the case of organic carbon. Muzefa, can I ask you to please end your presentation in one? Okay. Please, uh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
And uh, we have uh, an experience visit of uh, PT coordinators, I myself and uh, Mr. Mehratu, who is the laboratory head, visited the international PT providers from September 1 to 7, 2019, at Lanuf, Duisburg, Germany, at Weppal, Wagingen, the Netherlands, at ISWA, Stuttgart, Germany. And the purpose was to just organize a local PT proficiency testing to in Ethiopia. I think uh, this is my last slide. The way forward, just the, the rotary sample divider is purchased from the PTB project. And uh, this is under the custom clearance uh, in, the, in Ethiopia. And uh, in the next purchase of certified reference field sample for the assigned value, because we have difficulty to get assigned value. And also the next step is uh, PT launch workshop to gather most of the labs of Ethiopia to get just enough participants. But currently we have only eight participant laboratories, but to increase uh, participant laboratories out of 68 so laboratories exist in Ethiopia, we should uh, have a launching workshop. And uh, then definitely after getting the rotary sample divider, we will conduct the second PT provision for more than 10 swell labs. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. And sorry to put you in Harry, <laughs> but because we are getting late on the agenda. Okay, so, there are some questions in the chat, maybe you want to get to answer it later after our presentation? Or maybe not? we can take some question now. I see a hands up from Alan Evans from Portugal. Alan, do you have any question for Muzefa? Um, hello, everybody. Um, it wasn't really a question, it was more of a comment. Um, as the gentleman from the uh, British Geological Survey mentioned, that um, the units really need to be harmonized. And I think if I was reading and watching the presentation correctly, I think uh, Mr. Musafa had two different units for the uh, exchange uh, capacity of soils. I think he added in milli equivalents per 100 grams and also in centimoles of charge per kilogram. Um, and if that is true, uh, perhaps just a suggestion that maybe it should be harmonized to just use the, the international uh, standard organization uh, units to make things easier for whoever participates in the scheme to know which units they're reporting in, it in, even though the, the, the results themselves are exact, uh, exactly equal. I think maybe just for consistency, uh, you should consider something like that. So that's it, sorry. Thank you, I don't know if Muzef or anyone else wants to rebut to it. If not, we can read the question for you, Muzefa. Uh, why were only eight participations on the PT? You mentioned that at the start, you mentioned at the start of the presentation that there are 68 soil laboratories in Ethiopia, or did I misunderstand something? Yes, yes. There are about 68 soil laboratories, but we are the first pilot PT provision was for only eight participant laboratories. But why is that? Because of uh, financial resources, uh, uh, because you started to test your capacity in organizing the PT. What's the reason behind working with only eight laboratories? Yeah, for two reasons. The first one is uh, all, all laboratories did not have uh, any kind of uh, information, uh, whether there is a local PT provider. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's why I mentioned uh, there should be uh, a launching workshop with the help of PTB and the Minister of Agriculture, because uh, such kind of starting in PT provision locally is mm -hmm. so much interesting. So there should be a, a PT launching workshop. And the second reason is we are, we are exercising. Uh, so exercise should be started with a small number. And after getting uh, much experience, we will increase the number of participants. Okay, thank you very much. Another question for you very quickly because we are getting late. 
uh, why do you sieve your soil at 0 0.5 millimeters? I, don't, uh, I do know that uh, for particulate organic matter, so POM 4000 uh, 53 uh, micrometer, uh, 0 0.4 millimeter is often required. I always have a duty to explain why when submitting papers to the international journals. Many thanks for the response. Usually uh, in different uh, journals, uh, in different papers, uh, for example, organic carbon and total nitrogen should be analyzed by using 0 0.5 millimeter sieve sized samples. I just take this uh, reference and also to, to get uh, homogeneous samples. Normally, a soil is defined uh, when it is below the two millimeter, but we use only 0 0.5 millimeter sieved soil samples because we didn't uh, analyze texture, particle size analysis, clay, sand, and fraction. That's why we use only 0 0.5 millimeter. Okay, there is another question about the units of measure. I don't know if this was already answered in the chat. Yeah, but the, the, the question about the PT value, I think, is very interesting. And also, on why using two different units for the same thing? Yeah, I don't know if that was already answered. Yeah, how do you get the true value of PT? Is it mean of a participating lab? But I think you said no, or one of reputable lab. I wanted to ask that question. Where is the reference coming from? We set the true value with the help of uh, with the help of uh, Doctor Michael Koch. Okay. This this is a very important point because yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's impossible, in fact, to get the true value in a soil because you you have to have a consensus value or refer to a reference lab. And I think when you said you have not enough lab, we come back to the presentation that Nock made, Nock Mani, the chairperson of Glossoland made at the beginning. One benefit for you would be if you can provide enough sample to Glossoland, that we spread your sample in a Glossoland PT and you have the analysis made by some tens of 100 labs around the world. So you would have a consensus value calculated from a large set of labs and you still have the soil in your country. So it can be a reference material valuable for you and all the countries of the region. Because I have seen one of the neighboring uh, country, uh, Djibouti, that asked to have some contact with you. And I think it would be good if you can make some contact with them and they can participate to your lab also. Because so one more country in the region or some other countries in the region can join with you. But I think this will be discussed later in, in, the, in that meeting. For, inform, for your information, for the next PT round, we definitely we will use a certified reference soil sample. That, that most probably we get from WEPAN for the assigned value, not the consensus value, because uh, we, we, this is uh, expensive and, and the financial aspect I think is one of the things that uh, Glossoland, that is FAO, that it United Nation would like to solve to have just like let's say participatory uh, research and participatory uh, helping and networking to avoid all that financial problem that all the countries and all the labs cannot face. It, it's a very important point. And uh, really congratulations to the Thank way you. you have organized the things. It's very professional. Huh? I'm you. very much impressed. Huh? Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, is there any other question for Ethiopia? So for Muzefa, either in the chat or by raising your hand? If not, my proposal is that uh, we stop here and we start at two again with uh, the case of Belgium so that uh, we, we close on schedule and we break for lunch. All fine? Okay, yeah. so <laughs> we, we close it here for this morning and I see you again using the same link at uh, 2 p.m.
Okay, see and we start with Belgium. See you in one hour. See you in one hour. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye everybody. Bye bye. All right, see you. Bye. Bye for now.